what's next? What's next is essentially the shift in solving problems. Technology has three key attributes that would make sense to apply to solving all these problems we're facing. One is you cannot scale. And I've already been through this a million ways of how to scale. So I'm not even going to prove that. Just say we get how technology can scale many, many more people into doing something than a small group. The second thing it can do, because of all those people, is you can parallel process. This is a server farm. This is essentially how, which superseded supercomputers. And why? Because people said, ah, if you ask a question to essentially a server farm, you could break up the problem into a bunch of little things, send it to the little brains of this, these little kind of slow moving, relatively slow moving computers. They'd take, each solve a piece of it, and then they'd slap it back to you in an instantaneous second through telecommunications. That's the server farm. That's how Google works. That's how you get that back in a second. It's essentially a distributed problem that brings it back in like this flash from eye. So anyhow, but you can start to do that in a bigger way. You can say, ah, so we can start taking all these problems I showed you at the beginning there, and we can start actually breaking even all those problems down, and you can actually scale tens of thousands and millions of people, frankly, around this, working on these things. So that's the way you can start to do things besides just having everyone go to Washington and sit in a think tank and you know, get 10 people in a room. This is a way that you start to do things. Ultimately, though, this is the key one. You could start to break down space and time. Space. So we are now going from a physical meeting here is what we've, how we've solved problems forever. Physical people in the same room. Well, then we start thinking, ah, what would help us do that same meeting but from afar? Well, we can start sending, we can send emails back and forth, which is still the way most people do things. And then we realized, ah, you could actually have instant messaging. Same time you could talk to people. And so then there was Skype. Oh, you can open these videos. And so anyhow, what we've had is a proliferation of these little pieces of the tools of like, ah, we can collaborate from afar. Well, what's happening now is you're starting to watch essentially different, now you're to the next generation, which is like, how do we integrate all those things into a different way? And now there's a bunch of startups, like Jive is one of them here. I don't know how do you know these, Yammer's box. They're starting to say, how do we start to integrate that experience so that all you have to do is use one tool or several tools and essentially can get to the point where you're getting to the essentially where you get a virtual meeting here which is getting close to the subtlety and complexity of physical meetings. That's the goal. Well, the thing is, the technology is getting us close there. It's not there yet, but I would say within five to 10 years, we will be able to hold the same kind of, what it takes in this physical meeting, you see me, you feel me, you know, we're connecting, we'll be able to do that virtually. And once you start doing that, you can scale up these problems. Now, the proof of this, and this is how I'm gonna end here, is I wanna show you an example of this, which is, an example of taking advantage of these new tools to do something that is extremely nuanced and extremely complex that is a nice insight into how we're gonna get into the future here and solve these things. And this is essentially the virtual choir. What this guy did was he took a YouTube video in which he basically conducted and gave people music and he had all these people on the internet just let random people uh, essentially um, audition and send them his, their video of them singing and he chose the right ones, he got them to practice, he got them to sing, and they basically came up with, I'll show you a little fragment of this, this thing. get a little glimpse, you notice those are all millennials, nobody was in the same room, no one saw each other, Everybody, nobody 
gathered, no one paid plane tickets, no one had to buy special equipment, no one did anything. They sat in front of their computer that they already had and basically did their part to do a beautiful, complex, collaborative piece. And that is only one little glimpse at the kind of collaboration and the kind of things we will do together in the coming decade around these incredibly powerful new tools. And with that, I'm going to stop here and say thank you. You've been a fantastic audience. Thank you.